And you see, Steve, it's actually that simple. People who don't like Gundam Age equals uncultured. It's basic math. Oh, looks like someone's calling. Could be another customer. Hello, Crow's Pro Shop. Hey there. I'm trying to reach the Crow Shop. Yeah, this is us. Awesome. Listen, I'm looking for a particular Overwatch figure. Think you could help me out? Oh, we don't actually carry Overwatch figures, but uh, are you interested in anything else? Huh. Okay. Well, what about Beast Box? Got any of those? Nope. Do you have some Galgagar stuff? You know, the King of Braves? Nope. Any Figmas? Nope. Sailor Moon. You have to have Sailor Moon. Nope. Oh, I know. How about that super awesome Kotobukiya Mega Man Zero model kit? I've been dying to get my hands on one of those. <sighs> nope. Oh. No, huh? Okay, well. What do you have? Well, we actually carry the most lewd big titty model kits this side of Japan. Of course. Send them all my way. Hey, what's going on guys? Kurosama here. And today we're taking a look at the Kotobukiya Mega Man Zero kit. Uh, honestly, I don't know much about it and I've only played the game for a hot second. And I absolutely hated it, but I'm going to keep trying and see if I can actually get good. But nonetheless, built this kit, looks pretty good. Steve, what is your thoughts on it? Uh, it's a little bit too emo for my taste. Really? Your mind went to emo? Well, it's a little edgy, I guess, but it's not really emo. Girl, I listen to 30 Seconds to Mars. I think I know what emo is. Touche. And here's the kit all built up. Honestly, he looks great. Pretty anime accurate, or I guess video game accurate, but there is going to be some missing paint applications. Namely, on the fingertips of the hands, you're gonna have the missing yellow on the chest, and then when we get to the gun, you're gonna be missing some gray at the bottom handle. But for the most part, the kit looks great. The big problem is going to be its construction, and we'll dissect that throughout the video. But let's go ahead and just take a look at some of the details. So starting with the head, the design looks great. I honestly don't have any problems with this whatsoever. One of the noticeable things you're going to see though is that there's going to be lots and lots of seams all over this kit. Some of which are going to be fairly easy to remove, but then some are going to be a little more difficult because they're going to plug into something else and it would require that part to split apart. But there's definitely a lot of uh, tutorials online so that way you can go and get a little brushed up on how to remove them if you want to. And you are going to have a clear green piece for the center jewel on the head. 
and he is going to have the hair on the back of the head. Unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of different seams, as you can see, because it's just made of a bunch of parts. But it looks good because it has a action kind of blowing in the wind effect. Now for the chest and the waist. Not too much is going to be going on with this, except for you will need to paint the yellow right here on the chest. But it's going to have some seams. Uh, if, if you can, maybe try and remove them on the side. But other than that, there's not much else you can really do to this. If I mean, you could shade some things up if you want, but for the most part, this is going to be a pretty plain body. Now for the arms, they are going to have a lot of different seams. I mean, all in the hands, you got this little like uh, wristband kind of thing. You got the forearm and you got the upper uh, shoulder, which all is going to have seams that need to get removed. So moving down to the legs. Honestly, not too much is going on here. There's no like features or gimmicks that this kit really has. Um, has a lot of seam lines that need to get removed, but really other than that, it's fairly plain. And next we're gonna roll into the articulation. So the articulation for the head and the neck is gonna be two separate little joints. You're gonna have the ball and socket right at the top up here, so that's gonna give it a pretty good range of movement. But then this is also going to be on a ball joint, but it can really only move back and forth, not side to side. And the hair is going to be on the dual peg system, so it can move all around and back and forth. Shoulder is going to be on a ball joint, but I do recommend shaving as much of the ball joint as possible uh, because it is going to be extremely tight. But if you shave it, it's going to be a little bit more loose and it can you know, actually move and not potentially break the base of that ball joint. Can move out about that far. Rotation at the bicep. 90 degree bend at the elbow. This little gauntlet piece can move back and forth. And the hands are going to be on ball joints. Body is also on a ball joint. Hips are going to be on a peg system. They can go out that far. Can't go back that far, but the further you go, the more that is going to come out of the socket. So, eh, just be wary. Can't go forward that much. Swivel at the hip. Pretty bad bend at the knee, only about 9 degrees. This little ankle piece can move back and forth. Ankle's going to be on a ball joint. And the toe is going to be on a peg and a ball poly cap, so it can rotate really well, but for the most part, it's not going to be doing too much outside of rotating. And with that, let's get into the accessories. Four hands is going to come with fists for both, open hands for both, a trigger finger for both, and the Z-Blade holding hand. Now for the face, he is going to have two different face plates. This one in particular is just going to be a neutral face, and he is going to have three different eyes in total for this particular faceplate. The second faceplate is going to be a screaming face, and much like the first one, it's going to have three sets of eyes. One is looking left, right, and forward. Now for weapon zero is going to have the Z Saber, which is pretty much, in my opinion, his signature weapon. I love it. It looks really cool. Uh, I actually do prefer this over the lightsaber type one from the Mega Man X series. This one has a more triangle look to it, but I love the clear green that they went with it, and I do have the, uh, the hand right there attached. And next we have is going to be the blaster. This cannot be stored anywhere, which is unfortunate. Really would be cool if it can store on the side leg or something like that. I don't know how it really is in the game because it just kind of appears out of nowhere. Uh, but you could pull off the beam saber right here. And this thing is actually going to come with uh, two different beam sabers. So it's kind of weird that it, it has two different hilts, but I'm pretty sure it only has one beam saber like in canon. I don't think it carries around a bunch of them. So also something to note, it apparently has beam sabers on the side legs right here and what you're supposed to do is whenever you actually have him with the beam saber equipped, you're supposed to take that part off and you slap on this one without the actual hilt pretty much exposed. But the question is, why is there a second one right here? If someone in the comment section could let me know exactly why he has one on the bl uh, blaster and then two on the legs, that would be great to know. But going back to the blaster, so you're gonna have to do some painting. All pretty much like most of all the bottom right here is all going to be uh, gray, and this little part inside here is going to be gray. 
it, it sucks, but you know, it shouldn't be that hard. Just do some masking. Uh, there's also going to be a big seam right in the middle of uh, pretty much all this. So you're going to have to do some seam line removal. Wouldn't be too hard because you're not going to be taking this thing apart anyways. Uh, so just put like some uh, liquid cement and then just sand it all down and it should look really good. Now the last accessory is going to be this open hand with a pre-painted Z in it. Uh, the fingertips are also going to be pre-painted in white. Unfortunately, I was looking through Wiki and I couldn't find anything about it. So if y'all can let me know in the comment section below exactly what this represents, I would be extremely grateful. Uh, I believe it's a weapon or it, maybe it's a finisher, but really couldn't find any information on it. Some things to note is that you're going to get some extra poly caps just in case they break or you lose one. And you do get water slides for the eyes and the eyebrows just in case you decide to paint the face, in which I am, so this is actually going to come in handy. Now for our height comparison, here he is next to the High Grade RX 78-2 and the Master Grade 2.0. So for my final thoughts, honestly the kit is kind of a mixed bag. It has a lot of pros, it has some cons, so let's go into the pros first. Honestly, this kit is going to look amazing all posed up on the shelf, whether it's doing the cover art pose like it is now, or if it's doing a slashing attack or a blasting attack, maybe even just standing there. It's going to look really good because Kotobuki just knows how to make, I would say, kind of obscure anime video game model kits. and they, I don't know, they just make it work. So I'm pretty pleased with what they did with this kit. Another good thing to note is that the colors are really good. Minus the chest needing to be yellow, the fingertips needing to be white, and then the gray on the gun. Most of the kit is actually in a color accurate state, so there's very little painting that's going to be needed. Um, and honestly, straight out of the box, this kit looks beautiful. I'm pretty surprised at how amazing it is, because I was really expecting a lot more painting applications to be applied. And also the price tag. Uh, the retail price is about 3200 yen, and I paid about 3000 yen, so I paid a, just 2 bucks under, but taxes and everything kind of spiked it up a little bit, so I, I think the price is actually decent, but obviously there's going to be a lot of scalpers out there, so just be weary. I'm pretty sure you can find it for around 3000 yen as well. Now for the cons. Uh, I'm not going to hit the color as much as I really want to because I think the yellow on the chest could have easily been done. The white on the fingertips I think could have been done because they already did it with one of the hands. Why not just do it with all of them? But I'm pretty sure they wanted to save on costs and they're like, hey, just do this one special hand. Now the articulation is going to be extremely limited in so many parts, namely the uh, elbows and the knees. The, uh, the feet are actually okay, you could do some good pivots, but those two spots in particular really hinder this kit from just being amazing. But everything else is actually fairly good. The shoulders, the hips, I think those joints are actually okay and the head can move around quite a bit. And the last one being, I think some more accessories could have came with this, but Considering I think this is based on the first game and not the entire Z series, I don't know how many weapons was in the first game, but I think they could have afforded to just throw in a couple of extra things. Uh, maybe even just like a little gimmicky kind of like power up or energy token or something like that, or you know, just something that kind of gives you a little more immersion that this thing is in a game. So something like a little enemy cutout or something? I don't know. I'm just kind of brainstorming because they did this with Metabots but they didn't do it with this, and I don't know. I mean, maybe in the future we can get some more cool stuff, but the Mega Man X series, uh, I know they have a couple of cool things with Zero coming out. I think he has like a little life bar, um, or not a life bar, but a little life power up, so I think that's pretty cool that they're actually going to that direction with the new Mega Man kits, but this one definitely could have used something. Well, Steve, that's it for the review. So, honestly, it's not too bad of a kit. Couple of issues here and there, but how about you? Do you think it's actually a really cool kit? Is it too emo for you now? Crow, not only do I think it's emo, I actually think it's a piece of shit. There is no pleasing you, is there? <laughs>